Miss Kennedy asked me to fill out a form. Right. Here you are. You can sit down over there. Thank you. Miss Kennedy, there are two gentlemen here to see you. Miss Kennedy will see you now. Would you like to go right in? Thanks. I'm Steve Walker, and this is Buzz Jenkins. Can you tell us, Miss Kennedy, just what this job involves? Of course, but first I'd like to know a little bit about both of you. Now, are either of you married? Uh, no, but that doesn't mean we're not dependable. Oh, no, I I'm sure you are. Profession? Well, we're, we're both actors. Uh, no doubt you saw us in uh, Kiss Me Quick, Pauline. No, I'm afraid I didn't. In any case, theatrical experience is very much in your favor. We would prefer to have our mornings free for auditions. Oh, this work is strictly nocturnal. Oh, that's for me. Buzz was only joking. Mr. Jenkins, I must emphasize that this bureau is deadly serious about its work. Oh, pardon me? My next question may be a little bit difficult to answer, but I'd like you to be as frank as possible. How well versed are you in uh, everyday etiquette? And I don't mean, do you use the right fork with fish and chips, either? We feel we're at ease with most people. What manners weren't dinned into us in our respective homes, we learned to mimic for the stain. Oh, fine. Fine. Now, do you mind telling us how this bureau operates? Well, when a man is asked to a social function and asked to bring a date along, he either looks in his little black book and phones around until he finds a girl, or perhaps he asks a neighbor or a girl next door. No one raises an eyebrow. It's accepted practice. But if the woman's the one that's invited first... Exactly. If the girl isn't either married or engaged, or if she's shy or doesn't know any man, she can be placed in a very embarrassing position. And this is where the male escort business comes in? Yes. We supply our clients with dates for the evening. They pay us, we retain a commission, and pay you. Oh, not bad. We get paid to take dames out. Mr. Jenkins, you get paid for taking ladies out. And I must emphasize the word ladies in case there's any misconception on your part. Your escorts only. If you've got any fancy ideas about becoming professional gigolos, you'd better get them out of your head right away. Oh, we understand. This is strictly a business arrangement. You'll be paid five pounds for each client you escort. Five pounds? Hey, when do we start? First, you must undergo a period of training. Being the perfect escort is more specialized than you'd think. I shall train you myself here. If you ask the receptionist, she'll give you a form to fill out. Details of background and interests, etc., etc. We like to match our clients to their dates as perfectly as possible. Sounds fine. Well, thank you very much, Miss Kennedy. When would you like us to come back? Say tomorrow afternoon, two o'clock. Uh, yeah, that'll be okay. Well, come on, Steve. Let the lady do some work. Huh? Well, bye for now. Bye. The women you'll be meeting are all used to men who are both charming and attentive. Your manners must be impeccable. Flatter their femininity. Buzz, we'll begin with you. We? Yes, we'll start at the beginning, when you go to call for them. Come along. <coughs> now, imagine this is the doorway to her house or flat. You go outside and knock, and I'll answer the door. Knock? Yes, now. Do you say? Oh, uh, oh well, uh, my name's uh, Buzz Jenkins, you know. I, I came along from uh, Kennedy's Bureau. They'd sent oh, no, me along... Oh, you mustn't and... say Kennedy's Bureau. That might embarrass the woman. No, you put her entirely at her ease. Just give your name and shake her by the hand, politely. Now try it again. Hmm? Okay. I think that covers everything except the end to our perfect evening. Sometimes this can be the most difficult part. Now and then, you get a client who expects not only a date, but a lover. Oh, you can put me down for one of them. I'm deadly serious on this point. When you take her home, you say goodnight to her, and that's an end of it. 
We're a reputable agency and we intend to stay that way. But suppose she asks you in for a drink? Well, you refuse as politely as possible. Well, if you think it's an innocent invitation and she'd be disappointed if you didn't, you could have one drink and then leave. But that's all. And if, while you're having the drink, she makes a pass? Well, you ward her off. Oh, but some girls can be pretty insistent, I hope. Buzz, please. Steve, I'll be you and you'll be the client. Make a pass at me. I... I think you'd better leave it to your own judgment. Now, you've each got the name and address of the client you're escorting tonight. Jack, you're taking yours to a concert. Got the tickets? Right here. Good, good. Now, Buzz... You've got one of our leading socialites, Nadia Summers. Oh, just my type. So mind your manners. Now, you're stuck with rather a forceful personality. She's chairman of a temperance organization. Oh, no. So remember, don't ask her what she'll have to drink. I promise. Now, I think you've all got sufficient money. Remember to account for what you spend. And most of all, do remember what I've taught you and make use of it. Okay? Right, let's go. Into battle. Goodbye. Aren't any nuts? No. <laughs> you see, Mr. Walker, the evils of alcohol. Little do the unwary know the degradation which they may sink into in pursuit of the fermented grain or grape. How very true. Yes, how very true. Hello there. Good evening. Well, uh, what a charming little place you do have here. Very. Very smart. Real, uh, cozy, I may say so. Great big beautiful man. <laughs> Where have you been all my life? Well, surely this should come at the end of the evening, not at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> Why wait? Uh, well, uh, you know... <clears throat> he looks rather interesting. He is. Actually, he's one of our very best escorts. Charming, witty, very well educated. Yes, I think he'll do nicely. When would you like him to escort you, Miss Quinn? Tonight. Tonight. Right, I'll arrange it. I'm expecting him any minute. Yes, I think you'll agree he's absolutely ideal for our purpose. Now, don't worry. He's no idea what's really going on. Oh, that's him now. I'd better ring off. Yes, of course I will. All right. Good evening. I'm Steve Walker. Good evening. I've been expecting you. I've heard a lot about you from Miss Kennedy. You've got quite an interesting background, Mr. Walker. Thank you, Miss Quinn. I'm glad somebody thinks so. Call me Elizabeth. We're going to a party given by some friends of mine, and I think it would look better if we were on a first-name basis. Then I'm Steve from now on. Do you drive? Yes. Good. I'll take my car. Hey, Rockmore. Thank you. How's the shooting? Very well, indeed. Very Very pheasant? Yes. Jolly good. Yes. Elizabeth, darling, I'm so glad you could come. I wouldn't have missed it for the world. Hello, Elizabeth. I'm glad you managed to get here before the drinks ran out. You know you can rely on me, Arthur. Well, aren't you going to introduce us? Oh, I'm so sorry. This is Steve Walker, Barbara and Arthur Vickers. Uh, welcome to our snake pit. 
Where have you been hiding Mr. Walker? Darling, I don't have to tell you all my secrets. <laughs> Let's leave these two old hens to their cackling. Right. Come on, old boy, get your drink. Excuse us. Mm. He's so handsome. Your latest conquest, dear? I refuse to answer that, on the grounds that I might incriminate myself. Oh, I adore being here with you like this, darling. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, uh, we're supposed to be uh, going out tonight. You know, I'm supposed to be your escort, remember? <laughs> well, I'm not complaining. Why should I with anyone as handsome as you are? Yeah, well, you've uh, got a very good point there. Uh, tell me, um, uh, do you always wear those glasses? I'm blind as a bat without my glasses. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, may I just take them off? I'd like to have a really good look. <sighs> You're so forceful. Uh, well, uh, let me uh, let me just get a good look, you know, from the other side of the room. But I can't see you. Oh, you, you look wonderful without your glasses. You've really got the most beautiful eyes. You really have. What a very sweet thing to do. <laughs> Oh, darling, you're my favorite escort. Oh. <laughs> you know, I have a nasty feeling that this thing is going to be bigger than both of us. How sweet. Steve. I've thoroughly enjoyed myself. Well, good night, Elizabeth. Good night. For now. Hello? Yes, we just got back. No, I'm alone. Yes, I think it went rather well, too. He is ideal, isn't he? Sorry I couldn't check in sooner. Everyone gone home? Yes, I was just leaving. We've been looking for you. Now, is that an audition all day? Oh, get the part. No. But Buzz got a walk on. Said it was better than being available for Nadia. <laughs> Why were you looking for me? Oh, well, Elizabeth Quinn wants you to escort her again. Oh, when? Tomorrow night. You obviously made a big impression. I owe it all to your careful instruction. Thanks, but I'm sure you've got a couple of tricks of your own. And we ask Miss Phillips and she'll give you the details in the morning. Well, since I'm not busy tonight, what say you and I go and have some dinner together? Oh, well. No, I don't think so. I'm very tired. I think I'll go straight on home. I'll walk you to the bus, then. Down. Oh, it's a bit chilly. You can sit close to me and keep warm. Thanks, I'll manage. You're making me feel like some sort of big bad wolf. We choose our escorts for their effect on women. Sometimes I think their success goes to their heads. You malign a noble profession. One advantage of owning an escort bureau is that one gets to know men pretty well. And you think you know me? Well, most of it was in the form you filled out. The rest I worked out for myself. I'm just a poor actor that happens to like you. And I'm a career woman. There's no time or place for anything else in my life. I don't believe it. I think I'd better go home. Terry, listen. No, no, Steve. I'm sorry, it's just that I... Look, I, I think there's something you'd better understand right now. I work pretty hard to get where I am. For the first time in my life, I have a fairly certain future. And I wanted to stay that way. Now, would you show me the correct way to escort a lady home? Okay. <laughs> really? Damn funny. Yes, I must say, I missed a lot in my own student days. Here you are, darling. Thanks. My father kept telling me if I wanted to be a successful businessman, I had to soak up all the knowledge I could. I'm always telling you you ought to go out and live a little, Arthur. He's the quiet type. You know what they say, still waters run deep. Me? I wish I had the nerve. No, I like a nice, quiet home life. I get quite enough excitement in the office during the day. Elizabeth tells me you have quite a number of business interests. Oh, more than's good for any one person, old boy. Too much responsibility. <laughs> well, I think it's time we were going. Oh, not already. Very late, and I'm rather tired. 
Well, you will come again, won't you? And bring Steve, of course, if you can't. My time's your time. Well, you have made a conquest, darling. Mm. And Elizabeth always was a good picker. <laughs> well, I've had a most enjoyable evening. It's still quite early. Come in and have a drink. I thought you were tired. Not anymore. Is it against the rules of the escort, Bureau? Not exactly. Well, but... Come on in, then. What will you have? I think I'll have a whiskey. What about you? The same. Barbara and Arthur are pretty nice people. Have you known them long? I met them at my coming out. We've been close friends ever since. So you had a proper debut, did you? With all the trimming, and it was a terrible bore. But then I'm the granddaughter of Sir Andrew Quinn, and, well, I didn't have much choice. Sir Andrew Quinn, yes, I've heard of him. International finance, wasn't it? That's right. I suppose I must have been his favorite grandchild. Anyway, he saw I was well provided for in his will. Mm -hmm. So that's how you manage all of this? That's how. Now, tell me about yourself. How do you come to be a paid escort? Meaning you're surprised I am? I suppose so. I'm an unemployed actor. I couldn't have chosen a more precarious profession. But until such time as a part turns up, this is as good a way as any of earning a living. In fact, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Do I detect a compliment buried in there somewhere? Could be. I've had such an enjoyable time that well, I almost believed you were a personal date. But... But what? It's midnight and I've changed back into a pumpkin. What on earth is that supposed to mean? Rules of the profession. The what? <laughs> this escort business. I shouldn't really have come in. So I've no way of knowing whether it's me you're interested in or your fee. Well, maybe I'll tell you in time. Perhaps this will help you decide. Good night, Steve. Good night, Elizabeth. Good evening, sir. Good evening. No, I was just getting ready for bed. No, he left ages ago. I do wish you'd trust me. Sorry, I'm just tired, that's all. Yes, I'll see you then. Good night. Oh, it's all right. Should have been up ages ago. You been out with Elizabeth again? Yeah. Is this thing getting to be steady with you? She keeps asking for me. Hey, aren't you supposed to be at the dress rehearsal? Yeah, I was, but the director decided that the crowd scene was too crowded. And, well, I knew when I just wasn't wanted, you know. Tough luck. <laughs> well, well, there's always not here. Oh, I know Terry's pretty short-handed at the moment. She can still use you. Yeah, I could use that five pounds a night myself. They find somebody else for me to take out, though. What gives with this uh, Quinn dame of yours, anyway? I don't know. You know, she's got everything a girl could possibly want. And yet she latches on to an unemployed actor whom she has to pay to take her out. Just doesn't figure. Well, maybe she's in love with you. Is that what you think? <laughs> could be. Maybe it's just the way my tiny mind works. Did you say every night this week, Miss Quinn? Yes. You see, I'm leading rather a full social life at the moment, and... Mr. Walker fits into my set perfectly. Yes, well, of course, I shall have to ask him first. I think you'll find he'll be delighted. Oh, uh, I see. I'll give you a check now to save the bother of paying every time, won't it? Thank you. I'll tell Mr. Walker when he comes in. Oh, good. 
well if it isn't the answer to a rich maiden's prayer. Hello, darling. How about a little kiss, huh? What happened to your starring role in the West End? Oh, well, they wouldn't bill me above Sir Lawrence Olivier, so I just had to leave. <laughs> Maybe Larry will beg you to come back. Oh, I just love you, darling. I really do. Hello, Steve. Hello, Elizabeth. I've just made all the arrangements with Miss Kennedy. See you tonight. Well, I'll get you, lover boy. Steve, would you mind coming into my office a moment? Well, I'm back in the escort business. What do you got on the books? I've been getting loads of requests for your companionship. Really? In fact, the same lady telephones for you every day. Her name... Oh, no, no, don't tell me her name. Just let me guess, huh? Terry, honestly, I'm surprised as you are. What I want to know is what exactly is going on between you and Miss Quinn? Meaning, am I breaking the rules and leading her on, I suppose? Well, it's not unusual for a client to want the same escort for several times, but seven dates in one fortnight and now every night this week? Look, Terry, there's nothing going on between us. If you don't believe me, why don't you send Jack or somebody else? I've tried to, but she won't have anybody but you. Is that my fault? Well, I'm beginning to wonder. You ought to be pleased you're getting all this business. Look, I told you when you first came to work here, we have a reputation to maintain. And I'm doing nothing to hurt it, I assure you. There's nothing more to be said. Terry, listen. No, no, Steve, that's all. The other night you said you wanted a secure future, and all of this was the answer. Well, I know what I want, too, and Elizabeth Quinn doesn't figure in it. I said, that's all. All right. Sorry not to be dressed, but something came up and I just couldn't get ready in time. Anything wrong? No, no, it's not important. Look, Steve, wouldn't you rather stay in tonight? I thought you particularly wanted to see this play. You should have been a diplomat. Help yourself to a drink. I won't be long.
Yes, who is it? It's me, Buzz. I forgot my key. Come in. I don't think you'll be back this early. I expected to have a long wait. Oh, boy, that Nadia. Forget Nadia. Well, what's eating you? I'm in trouble, real trouble. Oh, so you and that Quinn thing were only platonic, eh? Just good friends. Uh, shut up and listen for a moment. Elizabeth's dead. Dead? What do you mean, dead? Just what I said. Somebody strangled her. You're joking. I was there when it happened. Somebody was hiding in the bedroom when she went in to get dressed. When I went in to see why she was taking so long, she was dead. And the murderer slipped out behind me. Do the cops know about it? Well, they haven't discovered the body yet. Well, didn't you call them? Don't be silly. They'd accuse me of the murder. Well, if you didn't do it, how could they possibly accuse you? To all intents and purposes, I was the only one in the flat at the time. There's only one doorway into the bedroom, and that's from the living room. It'd be impossible for me to prove that the murderer slipped out behind me. I see what you mean. What are you going to do? I don't know yet. I wiped off any fingerprints I left around the place. But you never can tell. Boy, dead. A girl with a figure like that. Now the only guy interested in her vital statistics is the guy from the funeral parlor. Well, this is the hall porter, sir. The one who found the body. Mm -hmm. When was that? About an hour ago, sir. What were you doing here? Well, I'm the house porter, sir. Miss Quinn asked me to come up this morning and fix a leaky tap in the bathroom. Well, I knocked on the door and there was no answer, so I thought she was out. So I opened the door with my pass key. Where's the bath? No, oh, through there. There's a leaky tap in it, all right. Mm, all right. Tell me now, did Miss, uh, Miss Quinn have any visitors last night? <laughs> Only that good-looking young fella. Which good-looking young fella? Well, the one she's taken up with lately. I, I don't know his name. I saw him come in, but I didn't see him go out. What time was that? Just after seven. I remember because the archers had just finished and I was taking the refuse out. You recognize him if you saw him again? Oh, yes. I saw him in the hall about a week ago. He was just coming out of here, wiping <laughs> lipstick off his face. <laughs> but I, I don't know his name or where he lives. All right, that's all. Thank you. I found this in a drawer, sir. Thought you might be interested. Receipts from the Kennedy Escort Bureau. <laughs> All right, come on, we better look into this. I still think you should go to the police about it. They booked me for murder as fast as they could. Now, figure it out for yourself. Who had the only opportunity to kill her? Me. Yeah, but what about motive? Oh, don't you worry, they'd dig up a motive somewhere. The trouble is, you've been seen about together everywhere. The police are bound to find out. I know. And I wouldn't mind betting they'll be here eventually. But if only we could find a way of getting over the... Yes? Tell the inspector to wait a moment, Miss Phillips. They don't waste much time, do they? Steve, what are you going to do? I don't know. Oh, we can't deny you worked here. Look, neither of you have to. Just tell the police that I did work for you, but that last night I packed up and left. But they're just outside. I could hide in that room. Miss Phillips wasn't in the reception when I came in, so she doesn't know I'm here. Yeah, but suppose they search the place. Now, they'd have to have a search warrant, and I very much doubt whether they've got that much evidence at the moment. Now, look, just try and look calm. Remember, you couldn't know about the murder. It hasn't been in the papers yet. Do you want me to stay here with Terry? Yes, you better. You and my roommate, they'll certainly want to question you. Now, just relax and try not to look nervous, OK? Relax. Try not to look nervous, the man says. Oh. Ready? No, but let's get it over with. Three, hold it a minute. My coat. Oh, no. Okay, good luck. Thanks. All right, Miss Phillips. Send the inspector in. Come in, Inspector. I'm sorry. I've kept you waiting. It's all right, Miss Candy. I put the time to good use talking to your secretary about the sort of work you do here. Please sit down. Thank you very much. Oh, allow me, Inspector. Thank you. 
pleasure. Uh, this is uh, this is Detective Sergeant Moore. How do you do? This is one of our escorts, Mr. Jenkins. Oh, well, I, I, I think I'd better explain, Inspector. I'm really an actor. You know, as a matter of fact, I, I've, um, I've played in, in many a uh, play and film with uh, Scotland Yard as its central theme, you know, and I, I can't tell you how thrilled I am to actually meet someone from Scotland Yard in the flesh, <laughs> so to speak. Yeah. You played a detective? Well, actually, I've played on both sides of the fence. Oh, you're going to be a great help to us. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <coughs> Miss Kennedy, have you ever heard of a woman called Elizabeth Quinn? Elizabeth Quinn? Oh, yes, she's one of our best clients. Miss Quinn is dead. Dead? But she was in here yesterday. Yes, I, I, I saw her myself. As a matter of fact, she looked as healthy as... She looked fine. She was murdered by strangulation. Murdered? Yeah. Oh, no. Who could have done it? That's what we're trying to find out. Miss Kennedy, we found these amongst her personal effects. Our receipts. Mm -hmm. Tell me, did she, uh, did she engage many men as uh, escorts from you in the past? Just one, but on a number of occasions. Same man? Yes, Steve Walker. Buzz, uh, Mr. Jenkins and I were just discussing him when you came in. See, what about this, Mr. Walker? Uh, well, he, he's, um, he's my roommate, you know. We, we share a room together up in Kilburn. And, uh, well, uh, last night he phoned me and uh, he... No, maybe I, I'd better keep my mouth shut. No, Mr. Jenkins, come on, you tell me what you know. After all, this is a very serious matter. Well, yes, of course, you're absolutely right, Inspector. Oh, well, um, last night he called me, and uh, he, he told me he was catching a plane for Paris, you know. Uh, he asked me to, to, to pack all his stuff and uh, send it on to him. So did he give any reason for leaving so suddenly? Uh, no, 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 he, uh, he didn't give any reason. He, uh, he said he'd write me and explain later. Uh, he just said, uh, you know, send all my stuff along to uh, uh, post restaurant in Paris. That's all. Miss Kennedy, do you keep photographs of all the men who've worked as escorts for you in the past? Oh, yes, I, I have them here. I wonder if you'd lend me one of Mr. Walker. No, of course. Here, Inspector, you're not blaming Steve for this, are you? I'm not blaming anybody, Miss Kennedy. Just yet. The night porter said he saw a young man enter Miss Quinn's flat last night. So I meant him and didn't see him leave. The description he gave me fits this, all right. He also said that this young man was uh, on really intimate terms with Miss Quinn. Or intimate, perhaps, you might say, than the hired escort ought to be. But that's impossible. Our escorts have strict instructions. Miss Quinn was a very attractive woman. Many a man might have disobeyed those instructions. Well, that's all for now. You might have to take receipts. Thank you. You've been very helpful, Miss Kennedy. Thank you very much. I've tried to be. Seems rather odd. Mr. Jenkins, yeah. you tell me that you roomed with Steve Walker. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Show me the place. What now? Yeah. Really, Inspector, you know, the place is such a mess. I haven't made the beds or hinted the ashtrays or anything, you know. I understand. I'll try not to notice. Thank you. By the way, Miss Kennedy, if Mr. Walker should get in touch with you, perhaps you'll let me know, will you? Yes, of Thank course, you very right. much. Mr. Jenkins. <laughs> yes, sir. Don't worry. We're going in a police car. It won't blow off. Did you hear everything? Yes. Porter saw you. I know. If he hadn't asked me, he'd have found out you were booked to go out with Elizabeth last night. No, it can't be helped. I'll just have to try and figure something out. In the meantime, I've got to keep in hiding. Well, where can you stay? Well, I had thought of here. That is, if you don't mind. Oh, no, of course not. What's this about the porter thinking you and Elizabeth Quinn were on intimate terms? Ah, he was exaggerating. Elizabeth kissed me once and he saw me wiping the lipstick off in the corridor. I see. No, you don't, because there's nothing to see. I heard the inspector telling you of Elizabeth's great charms. Well, it just so happens they didn't work on me. If I thought it was jealousy, I'd like that very much. <laughs> As you 
can see, Inspector, he's not here. I wasn't expecting to find him. You see, both beds are unmade. Oh, yeah, well, that one was uh, from the night before last. You know, we're, we're bachelors, we never make our beds, you know. <laughs> Real slobs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> see. Well, that's all for the moment, Mr. Jenkins. Oh, well, the, the, the next time I'm in the play, Inspector, I'll send you and the wife a couple of tickets. I'm not married. I live with my sister. Well, you know, you bring your sister along. It's all the same. She, she doesn't like the theatre. Well, you come along to a matinee one afternoon yourself, you know. All right. Thank you very much. What time the matinee start? Uh, well, what time can you get there? I'll let you know. All right. Thank you. Oh, uh, Mr. Jenkins, you fellas like long runs, don't you? Oh, yeah, we most certainly do, Inspector. <laughs> we may be able to fix you up with one ourselves if you're not careful. Oh, thank you very much indeed, Inspector. It'll be a real pleasure. <laughs> thank you. Very much. Yes, that's the man. You sure? Oh, positive. I never forget a face. Right. I want this copy and send out. Yes, sir. All right, that's all. Thank you. Now, it seems to me that if you stay in hiding, don't contact the police, They'll naturally assume you did it and build up a strong circumstantial case against you. While the real murderer gets away. I give myself up, they've already got a circumstantial case against me. Look, all they have to do is to convince the jury I'm guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. <sighs> reasonable doubt. That means with a strong circumstantial case, I've had it. And I think I might have an idea. Well, let's hear it. Now, the police are convinced I killed Elizabeth. And if I give myself up, they really will be convinced I killed her. Therefore, they're not looking for the real killer. Now, I know I didn't do it. Therefore, it's up to me to find the person who did. The trouble is, I can't do it on my own. I'll need the help of all of you. I hate to be left out of anything. Thanks. Oh, please don't mention it. We're all looking forward to a cosy reunion in jail. We can all do our party pieces for the other convicts, you know. Now, this is the way I see it. Elizabeth Quinn moved in some pretty high circles. Now, Jack, that girl you take out, Marion Daly, and Nadia Summers both moved in pretty much the same circles. Nadia never moves out of her flat. What could either of those girls do that could help you find Elizabeth's killer? I went out with Elizabeth about seven or eight times. Yet apart from a few facts and one or two of her friends, I knew very little about her. Now, the killer must have known her, because evidently nothing was stolen from the flat. Now, this is where I think both Nadia and Marion might be able to give us quite a bit of information. You mean you want us to find out who it was who had it in for her? I mean who might have had it in for her. Elizabeth got on pretty well with most of the people I met. That doesn't mean a thing. So few people show their true feelings at a party. It should be easy to get something out of Marion Daly. She loves talking. Nadia should know all about that set. She comes from one of the most important families in it. I think your idea's a good one, Steve. Fine. Now, Jack, you're booked to take Miss Daly out tonight, is that right? Mm-hmm. What about Nadia? I was just thanking my lucky star she hadn't called me for a date tonight, but I reckon I could fix it on my own. Never let it be said that I would let a friend down. Thanks. Is that right by you, Terry? Yes, of course it is. Yes, that's the man who came here with Elizabeth. You're quite sure? Yes, he was here several times. She was such a sweet person. Why would anyone want to kill Elizabeth? We can't see any possible motive. None whatever. She got on well with everyone. You know that she'd hired Mr. Walker from an escort bureau? She did what? She hired him from one of these agencies which specialise in providing women with... Well, that's God's. <laughs> Ridiculous. Why, Elizabeth attracted men like flies. Why would she want to pay someone to take her out? Well, that's what's puzzling us. But the fact remains that she did our walker each time. I can't understand it. How long did you know Elizabeth Quinn? Oh, three years, wasn't it? Evelyn Ashley's coming out party. Elizabeth's just turned up unannounced. Nobody seems to know who she was. I see. Thank you very much. I'll see myself out. Sorry to trouble you, Mr. Vickers. Oh, no, it's no trouble at all, Inspector. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Hello, darling. I told you I wouldn't be long, didn't I? You like my dress? Not here. Hello, darling. Don't you think you'd better put your glasses on? Oh, all right. I don't know where they are, I can't see them. Oh, they're right here. Oh, here they are. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, darling. 
I think it was jolly sweet of you to ask me for a date all by yourself. Oh, well, there's no reason why a guy shouldn't ask you for a date, is there? Absolutely not at all. <laughs> I think it's jolly sweet of you. I think we should go out tonight. We could go to the cinema or we could go to the theatre. Let's just go out to dinner. Oh, no, no, I, I, uh, I just want to sit here and talk. <laughs> Talk. What's come over you? Uh, nothing. I just want to sit and talk. Oh, I see. Well, what would you like to talk about? Uh, well, uh, about the murder of Elizabeth Quinn. What a beastly subject. Why that? Well, I, I just uh, know somebody that's uh, involved with the case, you know. A detective? Uh, yes, yes, you could call him a detective, you know. I just wanted to help him. I think that's jolly nice of you. What can I do to help him? Well, you, uh, you could give me some information about Elizabeth Quinn. Oh, I see. Well, you asked the questions. Did you know Elizabeth Quinn? Well, I met her a few times, but she was a terrible phony. Well, how do you mean phony? Saying she was Sir Andrew Quinn's granddaughter. Well, wasn't she? Sir Andrew Quinn didn't have any grandchildren. Well, where did she get all her money from? Someone was keeping her. You mean paying for her apartment and and giving her money? Yes. It's scandalous, wasn't it? Yes. I wonder who the man was. Nobody could ever find out. That's the strange part about it. But surely she... She must have had some close friends. Who were they? Well, it was hard to tell. She just sort of moved in and got to know everybody. There must have been at least one guy who had a thing about her. Oh, everybody was crazy about her. Why did she have to go to an escort bureau for a day? Did she go to the escort bureau? No, uh, that's what they're saying. Now, why on earth would Elizabeth, of all people, have to do a thing like that? Unless... Unless what? Unless she wanted everyone to think she was interested in her hired escort cover up for the man she was really having an affair with. Hey, I never thought of that. Have I been a help? You know something? You've been a great help. Have I really, darling? Now, two things are pretty clear. Elizabeth Quinn had a lover, and I was hired to cover up the affair. But why would she try to hide it? It mightn't have been her idea. After all, she was unattached and had nothing to lose. But a man might well have had to cover it up. Possibly he was already married, or else he was an older man making a fool of himself over a young woman. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a sugar daddy, though. If he killed her, he wasn't so sweet on her. Fine. It's all pretty obvious, but we still don't have a name for the fellow. Somebody must know. Exactly. And I'm determined to find out just who. But how? I'm going back to Elizabeth's flat. Now, I know the police have made a thorough search of the place, but there's just a chance they might have overlooked something. Don't forget, we probably know more about the case than they do at the moment. So if anything turned up, I'd be able to recognize it more readily. Yeah, well, how are you going to get out of here? The police are watching the building. And even if you do, how are you going to get into Elizabeth's flat without being seen? They're right, Steve. It's a crazy idea. Now is the time for you to go to the police and tell them you think there's another man involved. Let them find him. Don't you see, I have no proof. No, I've got to do it myself. But don't worry. I'll try not to get caught. Thanks for everything, Terry. You've been grand. I'm only sorry to involve you in all this mess. The least I can do is to get out now while you're still in the clear. There's a delivery entrance to this building, isn't there? Yes, sir. Around the side. You go through the basement. Fine. Well, try and time it so the three of you leave by the front entrance as I come out of the side. Try and distract the constable on duty long enough for me to get away unseen. I suppose you don't get away or you're spotted. Don't worry. I won't be. <laughs>
you understand or I'll kill you. Then you're the chap that... That's right. While I'm here, you're going to answer a few questions. Sure, sure. I'll, I'll do anything. Obviously, you keep a pretty sharp eye on what goes on around here. Well, I'm only doing my job. I've got to. I'm the porter. Then you'd know if Miss Quinn had any other regular callers beside me. No, she didn't. She you're did. lying. She must have had. I, I never saw anyone else. She hasn't been here very long. You're the only one I saw. Look, Miss Quinn had another caller the night she was killed beside me. Did you see anyone that night? I swear, I only saw you when you came back the second time. Second time? You must have gone out immediately after having that argument with her and come back later. That's when I saw you. Argument? What do you mean, argument? Well, you and she were having a pretty big argument. I could hear it through the door. What did you hear? Well, she seemed to be trying to break it off with you. Said she'd fallen in love with the other bloke. And the one that you two had hired. And dad worked out the way you planned. No wonder the police are convinced I killed her. For your information, I didn't have... A killer did, evidently. But you didn't see him, you only saw me. You certainly put me in a pretty picture. Well, you say you didn't kill her, you didn't. Anything you say. Believe me, I shan't talk to the police again. <laughs> you bet your life you won't. <laughs> Because you left the building, surrounded the policeman on duty, and 15 minutes later, Walker broke into the late Miss Quinn's flat. Oh, I used to tell him he'd learned bad habits on that detective series he was on. Look, don't you realize Walker's wanted for murder? But don't you realize, Inspector, that Walker could be innocent? If so, he's acting very strangely. If he's innocent, why doesn't he come in and prove it? There's enough circumstantial evidence against him to satisfy any jury. Maybe that's what he's trying to disprove. Well, so that's what he's trying to do. You said, look, I've known Steve for years. He wouldn't break a traffic law. Wouldn't he? No. Well, traffic law if he was in a hurry, that's all. Look, last night, your law-abiding Mr. Walker added two more crimes to the one he's already suspected of. Two? Yes, two. Look at this. Breaking and entering the late Miss Quinn's flat. Anyway, I've told you all about that. The assault. Well, who would he want to assault? The porter in the block of flats. He knocked him unconscious. If Steve did it, he must have had some good reason. Yeah, the porter didn't think so. Why do you think Steve went back to the flat, Inspector? Well, he might have gone back because he left something behind which would definitely incriminate him. Look, that's all I've got to say to you now, but I'm warning you. Now, listen to this very carefully. If it comes to my knowledge that you know where Walker is or you give him any aid or assistance, I'll make it my business to charge you and bring you to trial. Stop fiddling with that hat. Steve, where the heck have you been? I've been looking all over for you. Forget about it for the moment. Recognize this? Well, sure, it's, a, it's from the Penguin Club. They give them away as souvenirs. Right. I found it in Elizabeth's flat. Turned over and read the message on the bottom. Happy birthday. The Penguin isn't the same without you. Why don't you come around sometime? Love, Eldon. Well, who's Eldon? I don't know, but I think it might be the man in the case. I found out more about that from the port. I found out why Elizabeth was murdered. Evidently, there was another chap there that night, probably the one that was keeping her. She told him it was all off, and they had a big row. A few minutes later, when I came in, the port she had the argument with coming back for the second time. Strange, you didn't see the guy she was really having the argument with. Uh, he probably kept out of sight for a while after eavesdropping. How'd you get all this out of him? Great. At any rate, I figure this guy left the place straight after the argument and slipped back in. Well, how did he get in? Well, if she was his mistress, you can bet your bottom dolly had a key to the bedroom for her. Then I showed up, which made things even better for him. When she went in to get dressed, and hid behind the door waiting for me to come looking for her. The rest you know. Did you get to the Penguin Club last night? No, I remember just in time it was a private club. So we still don't know whose love was scorned. No, but I think I know how to get into the Penguin Club. How? Oh. Through Nadia. Now, quite possibly she's a member, or else she can range it through one of her friends. Oh, how inspirational can you get? Well, how about it? Do I have a choice? Thanks. I knew you'd say yes. Did I say that? Thanks. Keep the 
change? Oh, thank you, sir. We'd like some information. Information? Uh, my uncle, Colonel Summers, would appreciate it very much. Oh, yes, Mademoiselle, Colonel Summers. I know him. What can I do for you? Have you? Or did you ever have a member called Eldon? Eldon, now, let me see. Oh, yes, there was Eldon Baker, a girl who used to work here about three years ago. What happened to her? She got a little bit too fond of the drinks bought for her by the customers. I see. She got fired eventually. Drank herself silly, huh? Do you know where she is now? Well, funny enough, she was in here last week. She wanted to borrow some money from Mr. Vickers, the owner. Vickers? You mean Arthur Vickers? Oh, yes, of course. He's owned this place for a number of years. Mm, I see. Uh, do you know where this Eldon Baker lives now? Yes, she gave me her address. She was in here. She wanted to see Mr. Vickers, but he was out. So she left a note saying that she would like to borrow some money just to tidy her over. Said she would pay it back. But between you and me, huh, I don't think she could. Not with all the drinking. Do you still have the address? Oh, yes, sir. I still have it here. I'd like to help her out. I don't believe in hitting anyone when they're down. Thanks. My uncle will appreciate this very much. It's a pleasure, Miss Summer. It's open house. Eldon? Who are you? My name is Steve Walker. What do you want? I'd like to talk to you. Sure. Eldon Baker talks to anyone. Did you bring anything to drink? Thanks, you're a gentleman. If you want, I'll talk all night. What do you want to talk about? Elizabeth Quinn. Never heard of her. Did you know she was dead? Yeah. I know she's dead. And I hope they string the guy who did it up by his thumbs. That could be me. You? But I didn't kill her. But I'm being framed for it and I need help. I thought you might be able to give it to me. What do you want to know? Everything you can tell me about Elizabeth. Where did you meet her? In the Penguin Club. We worked there, encouraging the customers to drink. How did she get where she did? The owner of the place took a shine to her. Arthur Vicar? He set her up, gave her money and clothes. I thought she was lucky. She got out while she still had her looks. I stayed on hoping to get where she was. Now, what's the difference? She probably ended up by him killing her, and I'll end up killing myself with this stuff. And what's the difference, anyhow? Thanks for the information. You're welcome. doing here? I'd like to have a few words with you, Vickers. I've been checking up on you lately, and I believe you killed Elizabeth. You must be mad. You're the one that did it. Yes, you tried to make it look that way. 
You knew Elizabeth was expecting me, so after you had that argument, you what? waited... Who told you about that? Never mind. You were pretty sore about being thrown up by a girl you'd supported for three years, weren't you? That's not true. I was relieved. Yes, sure you're relieved. So relieved you slipped back in using your own key and then I you... I didn't have the key. Look, I've spent a pretty tough few days because of you, and I wouldn't mind beating the truth out of you. But I'm telling you I did not have the key and I did not go back to the flat. Look, I'd lost it. Give me that. I don't believe... He's telling the truth, you know. He didn't have the key. I did. I took it out of his pocket. You killed her. Yes. Yes, I did. Barbara, you, you don't know what you're saying. I overheard a telephone conversation you had with Elizabeth when you thought I'd gone to bed. It's bad enough all these years being humiliated when you kept bringing her to the house. But to be treated as a fool by her, using Steve as a subterfuge as if I was too stupid to see through it. I couldn't bear it any longer. So you put the blame on me. I'm sorry. You happened to be there. Where are you going? Can I call the police? Go ahead. Phone them. They'll be glad to hear from you. You've been hiding from them for days. They'll be pleased to know where you are. Unfortunately, they won't believe anything you tell them. No. Anyway, they've enough circumstantial evidence for any jury to find you guilty in five minutes. Well, go on. Phone them. Ask for the police. Ask for them, Steve Walker. Well, if you won't phone them, I will. Give me the phone. Give it to her, Mr. Walker. I'm glad you've arrived, Inspector. He'll probably attack us. You can arrest him now. Well, aren't you going to? That was a very interesting conversation I just overheard, Mr. Vickers. Yes, I'm going to take him in. Mr. Walker, you better come with me. I'm passing the escort bureau. I can drop you off. You better come along as well, Mrs. Vickers. I'm charging you with the murder of Doris Don't Jackson. Don't be so ridiculous, Inspector. I'm charging you with the murder of Doris Jackson, Lady Elizabeth Quinn. I must warn you that anything you say may be taken down news and evidence. I'm sorry, Mr. Vickers. Sergeant. Okay, you two, I know when I'm not wanted. Mr. Jenkins, I'll be looking for you. Oh, Inspector, I haven't done anything. Are you still a professional escort? Oh, well, I'm, uh, I'm still resting, if that's what you mean, yeah. Well, I've got to go abroad for a few days. I'd like you to escort my assistant. Oh, that'd be a pleasure, Inspector, a pleasure. Yes. My sister, Nadia, and you're just the one to entertain her. Nadia? Yes, Nadia. Mr. Jenkins. He look after you. Thank you, Inspector. 